Hey guys, so today is a real treat, um, at least for me. I'm going to be comparing all the crayons I have access to. Now I am skipping the, you know, really cheap dollar store, no name brand. I'm skipping what crazy art or rose art ones I have left over. I'm only really comparing the ones that are more than 25 cents. So the first one we have is the normal Crayola. Um, this is an older package, but you know, pretty standard Crayola crayons. Second one is the Twistables. So these are, from what I understand, the formula is more of a plastic than a wax, um, but they just, they perform differently from regular crayons. The third one is the Preschool Twist Ease. So these are a cheaper version of the Crayolas. Um, you know, just a different brand. Then I have these Faber-Castell, Faber-Castell Triangular Crayons. These are an older package design again, but um, these were my favorite crayons for a really long time. And then these are my most deluxe ones. This is the older packaging again. Um, you know, right now they come in the plastic case, but these are beeswax crayons. So currently it's $10.99 for a pack of 24 in plastic case. When I got these, they were $19.99 for this, I believe. But um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so number one. So, we're going to basically try coloring and then blending and also try erasing. Red, yellow, and one more color. Well, two more, let's do. Is this blue? And let's do a green. So nice smooth lay down. There's one flake, but it's you know really good. This is a sort somewhat smooth, but you know not completely smooth sketchbook paper. Um, it's uh, you know decently thick. So if you were to do this on on a printer paper, you may have the more of the flaking. Okay, so blending is not perfect. I mean, okay, it doesn't really blend at all. And you can see it, the previous layer almost acts as a resist for the new layer. But overall, I'm actually pressing relatively hard, so it's actually going on top of that yellow. Do you see that? But the yellow is still resisting. Okay, the blue and green blended very nicely. The yellow and I feel like the yellow might have blended better if I had intermediate colors as well. But look at that nice orange it made. Okay, so now I'm going to try just uh, doing a gradient on one crayon alone. So as you can see, you have to press really hard to get that, you know, full color. But again, once you do though, it's kind of hard to sort of blend it out. 
um, but this is better results than you would get on printer paper just because printer paper it flakes and stuff. But yeah, I think that shows the range of color pretty well. It definitely has some range, some nice blending. The very last test we'll do will be a eraser test to see if you can actually erase because some of the twist ups are actually known for being erasable. So, oof. I'm not sure which one's red. Okay, this is red. This must be yellow, green, and blue. Sure. So the twistables, they twist up. Um, there's about this much product, so it's a lot of product. But if you feel it, it feels um, it doesn't feel like a crayon. It feels like a plastic. But it goes on very smooth, like more smooth than the um, the crayons did. It's like if it's very like it's slippery. It um, like this, if you feel the texture, is almost slightly. Well, I mean it's wax, you know. It's almost slightly tacky. This one, it just goes on like oil or butter. It just it feels really smooth. So it's not the same um thing this is definitely not the exact same thing as the uh, crayons and as you can see it actually does layer very easily over the older um, older layer So again, green and blue are blending nicely. That might honestly be because they're just closer together than the other colors are. But yeah, with this one, you'll notice there's more specks of the paper showing through. But um, objectively speaking, I think it's, you know, it's actually performing nicely. Um, it's just, it's a better hand feel. And um, there is no specs or anything, but again, this paper is, this paper is a lot better than normal printer paper. It has more of a tooth, so it grabs onto the color more. And then for the um, shading trick. And this one was 24 colors for, I want to say maybe $5.99 or somewhere around there. Next one is the Play School, which is the cheaper version of the Crayola stuff. Let me go for the more golden yellow. These two yellows are so similar, but this is my, th th that's better. Um, it's just a lot better yellow. 
the colors for these are actually kind of misleading but they were inexpensive i think they were like two bucks i want to say for the set of um 12 and i just i just wanted something to play with at the time so these don't go on as smoothly as the crayola twistables but they do go on pretty smooth and i think a real you know preschooler would have fun with these just because they are uh, so much less messy than the normal crayons if you like throw it on the floor or something these aren't gonna you know crack if the um crayon bit breaks all you have to do is kind of shove it back in you know it might fall out but it is definitely less um messy than a normal crayons for kids And, you know, it's less likely to break, I feel like, if they, you know, jammed it. Because the the way this works, if you jam it really hard, it actually goes back in. So it kind of protects the crayon. Of course, you do kind of, you know, damage the twisting mechanism that way. But at least you don't completely smush crayon onto your um, carpet or something instead. So this one also layers on top. Yeah, see what I meant about the colors not being what they seem like? So this one doesn't really blend much. Um, I mean, none of the crayons before were really blending too well, but... Still, you can see the colors aren't quite as pigmented as the um, Cray Crayola Twistables. They're not even as the pigmented as the regular Crayolas, but crayons, you know, they it's different. It's a different product. So just like all the other colors, the yellow ones don't blend quite as well the green to blue is very good blending as you can see though it's less you know there's less color than the crayola uh, twistables so overall it's just a lesser product but again if you know a cheaper brand of the twist um twist up crayon type is all you can find they work and hey you know they have some advantages over the regular crayons, if only because they won't break into 50 bazillion pieces all over your kitchen or uh, all over the living room carpet. But these were the ones I had first, so I used these for quite a bit. And now, the good stuff. These were my like holy grail crayons for the longest time. These worked better than the regular crayons. They were, they were just gorgeous. Um, some of these are slightly damaged because I, um, you know, I broke tips and stuff and I used a candle to melt them and put them back together, which, you know, you're not really supposed to because it leaves the crayon sooty, but hey, and um, let's see, should I get Prussian green or deep green? Let's do deep green and then ultramarine blue. Yeah, these colors are named, um... You know, they're named as though they're like professional level art supplies, but they're not. So just keep in mind. But it might be a good thing to introduce a younger artist to the proper names for some colors, you know. So these are ginormous, by the way. If you look at a regular crayon, like if you look at a regular size crayon, Crayola, and look at this, these are ginormous. These are longer, they're wider, they're triangular grip, so, but yeah, I really like these. So they're more um, tacky, like there's more sort of stickiness than the twistables, but they're also real whack, so. You do see some flaking, but they do work better, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, than the Crayolas. Um, especially some of the Crayola colors after the reformulation were 
some of the Crayola colors after they, you know, some of the colors were reformulated because there was that asbestos thing. Um, the reformulated colors were, I'll be honest, a lot of them were quite lackluster. Um, but you see how it does go over, of course, because I'm moving around the red is now getting into my yellow because I'm pushing around the red wax. But it does um, layer on top of each other. You hear that? That's the sound you normally expect color pencils to make. So actually, these are performing less well than I remember. It might just be this um, paper because these perform really well on printer paper, whereas these would give those little, um, you know, flakes. But it looks like this, this one's the issue this time. But hey, you know, your mileage may vary and all that. This is just what I'm experiencing right now with these admittedly like a decade old crayons on this inexpensive sketchbook paper. Oh, see the blue is, but yeah, I'm actually surprised these are flaking all over the place. I remember loving these crayons so much. Probably just the wrong paper to use. But these, like this was my skin, the skin color I used. I, I love these crayons for the longest time. Absolutely adored these things. I forgot to do this side. And the last one the beeswax ones. Ta-da! Oh my god, these smell so awesome. These are so amazing. Again, right now they come in plastic, a clear plastic tray, but this is the old packaging. These smell like beeswax, these smell like elegant. So I'll grab the red, the yellow, and um, I guess this blue. And again, the size of these compared to the regular Crayola, like you can see, it's slightly stubbier, but it's so much wider. And these are triangular as well. You know, these, you know, they say crayons don't go bad, but I feel like maybe this set did go bad. They're over a decade old, so maybe just, uh, I don't know. Oh, wow. These are as sputtery smooth as the Twistables. They have more of a, like a sticky you know, gummy texture because it's real wax and not plastic like the Twistables, but these have a, such a smooth color lay down. Look at that. Look at that. Oh man. Like it just, like these, this feels slightly sticky. This just feels like a layer. It feels like you're feeling a candle. Oh look. This feels like you're touching a candle. It's so, it's wow. So this does layer over your previous layer very easily. So a lot of building up is possible. And it does sort of drag and smear around the layer though, so. However, if you were blending colors that are very close together, that probably would give you such a good blend. We'll see with the green and the blue. Do you see that? Look at that. Sorry, ignore the 
dragging of the color. I didn't mean to press so hard that it dragged, but do you see that? Look at that. It almost made two different shades of yellow green. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful. So easy to use and everything. I mean, if you want to compare it against the um, the Crayola, I mean, if you compare that against the Crayola, the Crayola needs so much more pressure. With the same amount of pressure, the Crayola looks like this. Do you see that? Versus this, the Crayola needs more pressure and um, just doesn't glide as well. This is so buttery smooth and stuff. It just feels like you're laying down a lot more color at once, which, well, you are, because it's a softer crayon, so the wax kind of really goes on, like it really slides on. Like, do you see that? So much of the wax is going on that I can actually rub this out like an oil pastel. Actually, this might be better for an older kid who's not going to make a mess like this. Because with the crayons, the Crayola crayons, if you rub, it might smudge a little, but there's not going to be that, you know, this. And my fingers are all inky. So um, this the Faber Castell ones might be better for a slightly older student. Um, of course, the Crayola ones are way too small, so if your grip isn't good, you're going to have so much trouble with those and the breaking, right? So these are thicker, but um, I mean, for someone with a less powerful grip, it's probably not going to be a big deal, but if, you're, if your kid is pressing down really hard like I used to and still do, you're going to like smudge right through. But these smell really good. They are, um, you know, they're beeswax. Um, I don't believe they're 100% beeswax, but the Stockmar ones, which are considered the gold standard for beeswax, are also not 100%. I'm not sure if there's any true 100% beeswax. You gotta have some fillers, some powders to sort of improve the way it works. Um, so let me try the eraser trick now. Okay, okay, normal Crayola crayon actually erases decently. Twistables erase pretty well as well. That's one of the pluses of Twistables. Traditionally speaking, the um, Twistables were considered easier to erase. So if your kid draws on the wall or something, um, again, they're supposed to be plastic. Um, obviously, I don't know the exact formula, but it's definitely not normal crayon. So the preschool is not bad either. Oh, this is kind of just going, this is kind of balling up. The wax is a little bit stickier, but it does, um, it does erase, just not as, I'd say it's not as easy to erase. It takes more effort. And then this is probably just gonna ball up. Yeah, see, this one smudges everywhere because the wax is softer and um, is a thicker layer of wax just because the crayon is softer. So I was able to really get a nice thick, you know, opaque layer down. Uh, you probably can't tell, but this is um, sort of very burnished. So heavy handed, you know, really pushing the color in. Shi it's even shiny. Um, whereas this, it was really light hand, but it just kind of all rubbed off. So, so basically, um, surprise winner actually, because I thought I would really love these and these most of all, but actually surprise winner for today is the normal uh, Crayola Twistables because they erase decently. They have a good color payoff. I mean, you know, they have a decent color payoff. Their blending is okay. 
Um, if you want to layer, then you definitely want the beeswax crayons because for, you know, layering or just more wax lay down, you're going to get more, re you're going to be able to get more results with this. Like you can layer one color over another and then go back and layer more, or you can take your nail and actually kind of, you know, you can just sort of use your nail to get rid of some color. Um, but... You can also use some oil pastel tricks to sort of smudge and blend and whatnot. So for a more mature artist who's not gonna get everything messy, the beeswax is still a good way to go because it's just so much easier. It's, you know, you're not gonna get carpal tunnel from working and pressing hard with little crayons. But for a kid, I actually recommend the Crayola Twistables followed by the normal Crayola crayons which are, I believe they're 50 cents right now on the back to school sales, because they work perfectly fine. Um, on this paper, at least, they didn't get the little specks and flakes, although I do remember that they tend to flake a lot on cheaper printer paper. So, heads up on that, but yeah, I recommend the Twistables. They're very smooth, they blend quite well, and they're only about, what, five or six bucks for a 24-pack, which will last you forever. Um, the Losers of the Preschool Twist Easy, followed by, and um, the Fit Faber-Castell Triangular Grip ones. Um, so basically, this one is all pale, and it doesn't really do anything well. It's, but it, you know, it works. Like, that's the most you can say about it. It works. It's fine, but you have to... You know, it's, you're not going to get the bright colors. But for a kid who's going to throw their art supplies against the wall or the floor and break them, the plastic barrel is definitely some protection. As well as, you know, it keeps broken bits of crayon inside the plastic barrel. So at least you can just, you know, chuck the whole thing instead of picking pieces of crayon off your carpet. This is actually, um, surprisingly, even though I used to love these ones, I'm going to recommend that you don't purchase them. I used the color in coloring books with these. I feel like the coloring books paper is more porous. It's a lot more uneven. So that's probably why the flaking and unevenness was an issue back then for me. Because um, I used to work with really cheap paper because I didn't really have, you know, real sketchbooks and stuff. So that might have been why the, this was so much better for me back then. Um, but as you can see, the top three at least do erase pretty well. So if you have a mistake, you can erase it. Um, but yeah, the beeswax only for older kids. Or, you know, somewhere where you wouldn't mind a mess. Especially like inky, you know, tie-dye fingers and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this review and, um, you know, please make up your own mind about this. Um, I have not tried any of like the Stockmar or other brands of beeswax. So take this review for what it is. I'm just reviewing one brand of beeswax. Um, and, you know, again, I don't have any of the cheaper brands of normal crayons, um, but I, they do work, you know, less well than Crayola, which for 50 cents a pack, there's not much reason why you want to buy the cheaper version. Because um, I remember how much grief I had as a kid trying to use the cheaper version. And just just get the Crayola. Just get the Crayola. Um, Prane also makes um, crayons and color pencils and whatnot. But Prane has more watercolors. So I say for crayons, just get the Crayola. Maybe try beeswax if your kid is older. Um, have a nice day, guys, and I hope this uh, helped you.